हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स लेट स्टडी क्लस्टर पॉइंट्स और लिमिट पॉइंट्स ऑफ अ सीक्वेंस दिस इज श्रीमती अश्विनी एस असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स द फर्स्ट डेफिनेशन वुड बी क्लस्टर पॉइंट और लिमिट पॉइंट अ रियल नंबर एल इज सेट टू बी अ क्लस्टर पॉइंट और लिमिट पॉइंट ऑफ अ सीक्वेंस ए एन इफ एवरी नेबरहुड ऑफ एल कंटेंट्स इनफाइनाइटली मेनी टर्म्स ऑफ द सीक्वेंस देर फोर एल बिलोंग्स टू आर इज अ क्लस्टर पॉइंट ऑफ अ सीक्वेंस इन अदर वर्ड्स we can define a real number l to be a cluster point of a sequence an if given epsilon greater than 0 however small and a positive integer m there exists a positive integer k which should be greater than m such that mod of ak minus l is less than epsilon when we remove the mod sign we would be getting l minus epsilon less than ak less than L plus epsilon. Therefore, every neighborhood of the points L minus epsilon, comma L plus epsilon of L contains a term of the sequence. Let's consider an example. We say zero is the limit point of the sequence one by n. Now let's find out. For epsilon greater than zero, there exists m belongs to natural number such that one by m is less than epsilon. therefore for n greater than or equal to m we have 0 is less than 1 by n and that is 1 by less than 1 by m and that's less than epsilon so this is written as minus epsilon less than 0 less than 1 by n less than epsilon so this implies 1 by n belongs to minus epsilon comma epsilon for all n greater than or equal to m So every neighborhood of zero contains infinite terms of the sequence one by n. Therefore, zero is a limit point of the sequence one by n. Now let's study few theorems on limit points. The first theorem says, if L is a limit point of the range of a sequence a n, then L is a limit point of the sequence a n. Let S be equal to range of the sequence a n, since L is a limit point of S. Every neighborhood of L contains infinitely many terms of S, but we all know that each element of S is nothing but a term of the sequence a n. Therefore, every neighborhood of L must contain infinitely many terms of the sequence a n. Hence, we say that L is a limit point of the sequence a n. The second theorem says the sequence minus one raised to n as Two limit points. We all know that minus one raised to n has two values, which is minus one and plus one. We get minus one when n is odd. We get plus one when n is even. Therefore, the range of the sequence is minus one and one. Therefore, every neighborhood of minus one contains all the odd terms of a n. Hence, minus one is a limit point. Also. Every neighborhood of plus one contains all even terms of sequence a n, which implies one is a limit point. Therefore, minus one and plus one are two limit points of the sequence minus one raised to n. The third theorem is very important, which is known as Bolzano-Weierstrass theorem. The statement says every bounded sequence has at least one limit point. So here we contain a n to be a bounded sequence and s to be its range. That is, s is equal to a n for all n belongs to natural number. Since a n is bounded, similarly s is bounded. Then we have two cases. The first case is if s is finite set. Second case is if s is infinite set. Let's consider the case one. If s is finite set, then There exists a real number l such that a n is equal to l for an infinite number of values of n belonging to natural number. That is, a n tends to l as n tends to infinity. Given epsilon greater than zero, we know a n belongs to l minus epsilon comma l plus epsilon for an infinite values of n. This implies every neighborhood of l contains. Infinitely many terms of the sequence a n. Therefore, l is a limit point of sequence a n. 
let's consider the second case if s is an infinite set since s is an infinite set then by bolzano weierstrass theorem s has at least one limit point say l now l is a limit point of s this implies every neighborhood of l contains infinite number of elements of s but we all know that each element of s is a term on the sequence an because you know s is written as an where all n belongs to natural number this implies every neighborhood of l contains infinite number of terms of sequence an which implies l is a limit point of sequence an thus every bounded sequence has at least one limit point the next theorem is the set of limit points of a bounded sequence is bounded let an be a bounded sequence since you know it is a bounded sequence we will be having an upper bound and a lower bound by definition there exist two real numbers k and capital k such that k is less than or equal to an less than or equal to capital k for all n belongs to natural number therefore an does not belongs to open interval minus infinity comma k and an does not belongs to open interval capital k comma infinity for any n let l be any real number if l belongs to these two intervals that is minus infinity comma k then minus infinity comma k contains no terms of the sequence an and consequently l is not a limit point of an if l belongs to capital k comma infinity then k comma infinity contains no terms of the sequence an and consequently this l is also not a limit point of an thus no points outside k comma capital k is a limit point of an which implies the limit points of an lies in the interval k comma capital k this implies the set of limit points of a bounded sequence is always bounded let's study the next theorem the set of limit points of a sequence is a closed set let us consider s to be the set of all limit points of the sequence an if s dash is equal to phi then s dash is subset of s therefore it is closed now let's consider if s dash is not equal to phi let x be an element of this s dash when i say x belongs to s dash it is same as saying x is a limit point of s as it is a subset of s this implies every neighborhood of x contains infinitely many elements of s given epsilon greater than 0 x minus epsilon comma x plus epsilon intersection with s will give us an infinite set let us consider y to be an element of x minus epsilon comma x plus epsilon intersection s then y belongs to x minus epsilon comma x plus epsilon and y also belongs to capital s this implies x minus epsilon comma x plus epsilon is a neighborhood of y and y is a limit point of the sequence an this implies an belongs to x minus epsilon comma x plus epsilon for infinitely many values of n and this implies that x is a limit point of an which means to say x belongs to s since s dash is a subset of s therefore x belongs to s dash this implies s dash is subset of s therefore s is closed now let's study the next theorem every bounded sequence has the greatest and the least limit points so to prove this particular theorem let us consider an to be a bounded sequence then the set of all limit points of an is also bounded and s is not equal to null which means that s has infimum and supremum by completeness property let infimum of s is equal to l and supremum of s is equal to k we have to prove that l comma k belongs to s for epsilon greater than 0 let k minus epsilon comma 
k plus epsilon b her neighborhood of k therefore supremum of s is equal to k this implies there should exist some element x belongs to s such that a k minus epsilon is less than x less than or equal to k and that is less than k plus epsilon which means to say x is an element of k minus epsilon comma k plus epsilon this implies k minus epsilon comma k plus epsilon is a neighborhood of x since x is an element of x x is an element of sequence limit point of a sequence a n therefore every neighborhood of x should contain infinitely many terms of a n this implies that k minus epsilon comma k plus epsilon contains infinitely many terms of a n this is true for every epsilon greater than 0 therefore every neighborhood of k contains infinitely many terms of a n which implies that k is a limit point of sequence a n which can be written as k belongs to s similarly we can prove l belongs to s hence every bounded sequence has the greatest and the least limit points the references are again a textbook of college mathematics by gk ranganath sequences and infinite series by np bali thank you